Good morning and welcome to a brand new video. Today, as you can see behind me, we are in a new city. To be more precise, we are in Saigon. Or maybe I should call it Ho Chi Minh. Well, I finally managed to get to Ho Chi Minh two days ago. It took me a while to get used to this city, the biggest city in Vietnam. A city that lays its foundation close to the Mekong Delta. A city full of motorbikes. It's just incredible the amount of motorbikes that I've seen these days. The palace behind me is the Independent Palace, used as a residency and as the as main office by the President of South Vietnam until 1975, when the North Vietnam, a tank from the North Vietnam, crashed against these specific gates in front of us. And North Vietnam won the war. Well, join me. We got ourselves a ticket. A uh, general admission plus exhibition ticket. The reason why I like to visit these kind of places is not because I'm a fanatic or because I enjoy spending time in a museum. I believe a well-traveled person should find the right balance in between fun and also culture, in between fun and museums, in between chilling and a bit of healthy entertainment. And here we can see, I believe, two tanks, two Soviet tanks, which are really, really impressive, really nice. 100%, I'm 100% sure that they, they've been built in the USSR. As I already said in the beginning, we are in South Vietnam. So the South Vietnam was financed and backed up by the USA. North Vietnam was financed and backed up by the USSR. It is really, really nice. It's not impressive, don't get me wrong. It's okay. It's a uh, four floors building. It looks nice. Soviet architecture, as you can see. Or at least, I believe it's Soviet architecture. I don't know. But the facade of the building reminds me a ton of buildings that I've seen in East Europe. Anyway, in the comment section below, I'm sure you'll correct me and I will be learning something new from you guys. Let's enter this amazing palace. And here on the right hand side, you can actually get a, uh, an audio guide. Finally, what I really like is that, maybe because it's the main palace here in, um, in South Vietnam, in Vietnam, in uh, Saigon to be more precise, and the relevance that this building had back in the days, they have the signs in Vietnamese, English and French. It's a rarity nowadays. It's, it was impossible during the whole time traveling in the region to find a sign in English, which is my opinion, in my opinion, is vital. Guys, I don't want to annoy you too much with all the historic information, etc. So I just have a quick look at the rooms in this palace. And let's call it over. The palace is quite big, to be honest with you. It's really, really big. It has this beautiful fountain in the middle, which is quite scenic. I was reading in here, as you can see, it says that uh, the architect took inspiration from his knowledge of symbolic concept derived from Eastern philosophy, which basically means from the USSR, the communist philosophy. Well, nowadays, as already mentioned in my previous videos, 
Vietnam is still a communist country. You can actually see the bright red Vietnamese flag with a beautiful huge star in, in the middle alongside a uh, red flag with the hammer and sickle exactly in the middle, which is literally giving you goosebumps, at least to me. Coming from a, a communist country, this is something that it shocks me. Anyway, let's carry on and let's have a look at the rooms. Another beautiful room, same design, big old table, ton of chairs. Oh, as you can see here, they were living the dream. A state bank here. Mm -hmm. Well, while the poor Vietnamese didn't have much opportunities, food, conditions to live, the bloody leaders they were taking, they were having actually banquets, parties. What legends? Well, I guess it's the same everywhere, ain't it? Wow, this is a really beautiful huge room so this is the conference hall we're about to see the conference hall where the president delivered the resignation speech he spoke over two hours i'm sure he said a lot of nonsense but still we still need to remember this let's have a look at it wow it's really beautiful. I don't know if you can see it, guys. On the left-hand side, there are the two flags that I already mentioned to you earlier. On the right-hand side, with the big star in, in, uh, in the middle, is the Vietnamese flag. On the left-hand side, the communist symbol flag. The hammer and sickle, right in the middle. I haven't seen a... Uh, communist flag of that size ever in my life before traveling to this specific region before traveling to Southeast Asia the first time and the first experience of that flag was in Laos we, we carry on our little tour of the Independence Palace and uh, I would like to say that I'm really grateful that I, um, I decided to come in and visit the palace because I'm learning new things that otherwise I wouldn't, I wouldn't know. So what I read on one of these um, signs is that South Vietnam uh, declared uh, surrender because the USA decided to stop their support, their financial support and their political support to the South of Vietnam. Therefore, a uh, win from the communist part of the country was inevitable. And in here we have two TikTokers, it seems like. Bloody hell, do I need to go all the way back? Because there are two TikTokers here. Well, I guess we have to. Just because you are polite, eh? Something really cool about the buildings here in, uh, in Vietnam is that all the buildings are open buildings. They are not uh, built the same way like in Europe, right? So we have the walls, the doors and the windows, correct? Just a basic description of the way that I'm seeing a building in Europe. In here, they've got these huge, huge uh, open spaces that are separated from the inside rooms only by a couple of windows or glass doors which is impressive I guess it's because of the climate I guess it's because of the yeah of the climate to the second floor ah right so to the second floor we need to take the stairs
and here is a uh, side view of the palace interesting wow this kind of stairs and this kind of handrails made of wood are reminding me the staircase in a in my ex communist land condominium well memories at least in here they're clean but anyway let's get up and have a look at the second floor wow look at the chandeliers really beautiful i'm really sorry for the elephant that had to die because of this president will alongside with all the innocent people anyway really beautiful these old style chairs nothing surprising me because I've seen this so many times beautiful and here is guys I just want to I just want you to see something look looking here so the way that they are describing the main chair where the president sat during his uh, presidency they are calling it a so-called throne-like seat bloody hell imperialistic way of seeing things here in it the so-called throne nice chandelier and nice curtains i'm actually wondering if these curtains are from the 1970s Super beautiful ivory horns, incredibly big. I haven't seen a uh, elephant with huge ivory horns in my life, but I guess they are authentic. This is the National Security Council chamber. I believe in here we can see maps of the Vietnam, maps that identified the territory during the war that's so nice aha uh -huh, so the maps that we can see hung on the walls are the documents that showed the war situation in the south another view from the last floor with the facade eastern european philosophy facade and here we can see the first lady reception room. Oh, lovely. Look how happy she is. This is a really little nice room. What I believe, banquets and little parties were held. Or maybe the afternoon tea. Who knows? Wow, this is so cool. They've got a uh, heliport in here. That's so nice. Look at that. Yes, they've got a heliport on the top of the palace. This is really impressive. I believe if the situation was going to get worse, the president could just flee the whole, could just flee the palace without getting captured, killed. Here we have a small cinema or a theater. I don't know. Definitely. They were having fun in here. More friendly Vietnamese people admiring their national monument. And here is the view from the last floor the presidential palace really nice left hand side the tanks in the middle the fountain and ahead the nice boulevard well they knew what to do they knew how to build or where to build their property oh yeah well, I was right this is a uh, cinema I believe that scene was used as a uh, exhibition. Pa 
part as well. I don't know. And well, here we go. The tour is quite fast. I don't know, the palace looks huge from outside. Is it that? That's it? I mean, a couple of rooms and... Oh no, I believe here we have a nice library with the chair and the office of the president. I like this lamp, it looks really cool. The best piece of this palace is definitely the helicopter on the rooftop. This is it. The visit is over. I was expecting something different. Maybe. Let's have a little tour around the park. I see in the distance, in between the trees, I don't know if you can see it, a nice plane. I believe the main attractions the main historical pieces are held somewhere else. Mm. I need to ask around. And this is a little nice. I was actually wondering, where was the president sleeping? It was used as a uh, work, office and residency. Where was he sleeping, bloody hell? Mm. Now I have doubts. Maybe I haven't seen the whole bloody palace. Mm. Mm -hmm -hmm. I don't know. I think I should stop and ask them. And that one is the exhibition. 250 meters that way. But before heading over to the exhibition center, where hopefully we will see some nice documents, objects, videos of that specific time, let's head over to this beautiful aircraft. That's really, really cool. FIV fighter aircraft. Wow, this is a really interesting story. An infiltrated agent bombed the palace that we've just seen a couple of minutes ago with a plane manufactured by the US. But it's huge. It seems on it seems like one of these um, F-35 that we have nowadays or uh, these super high-tech planes that are costing billions and billions to the taxpayers. That's so nice. I believe on the wings, these ones were the supports holding the bombs. Yeah. And I believe the cross on the star and on the flag symbolize the fact that this was an infiltrated aircraft. It was not a uh, ally, if you want to call it that way. It was the enemy. This is just my interpretation of the flags. Let's have a look at the... Wow! Engine. The engine, of course, was back here. This is for my thumbnail. Now, we've seen the beautiful aircraft. We admired the tanks on a distance. We briefed the clean air thanks to the trees in this park. It's now time to head over to the exhibition. Meanwhile, let me remind you, there are different kinds of tickets to get into the presidential palace. There, are, there is a, just a general admission, which is 400 
sorry. There is a general admission, which is 40,000, which is a little over or a little less than two US dollars. And then there is a um, uh, general admission plus exhibition center for a little over three US dollars, which is good, I believe. Nice, friendly Vietnamese. This bloody park looks like a small Versailles. It's full of beautiful alleys. It's full of beautiful trees. And it's quiet. Again, except me, because I need to vlog. But still, it is really pleasant. Hopefully, in here, in the exhibition center, we will see some beautiful artifacts, documents, videos, audios. I just cannot understand how they can drive fully covered. It's so hot. Hello. Thank you. This is the exhibition center. Oh yes, we are. Yes. No recording. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry. All right. Right. So guys, the guys said no recording. So I have to look at it by myself. exhibition is for the history of Saigon. It's not about the independence palace history. Because in here we can see all videos about the French and Vietnamese peace treaties. Small videos played the history of this place. Thank you. Right, so we visited 
It was a uh, two-story building, really nice, with some information about Vietnam and the city of Saigon in particular. Was it worth it spending 25,000 more to see this uh, small exhibition? Maybe. Or I should say yes, after doing 10,000 kilometers from Europe to Vietnam, definitely. But still, I was expecting something different. I was expecting to see more objects, more documents, more material about the South Vietnam. I guess I should go to the university to study more history at this stage if I want to learn more. Or to visit other museums around. Oh, someone is part of this coming. Look at that. Three nice Toyota cars coming to the palace. Guys, the visit to the Independence Palace is over. Before closing down the vlog, I would like to thank you, those of you who stumbled upon my video, who clicked on it, who watched it, even a minute. I really appreciate that. We had a uh, little tour. Hopefully you enjoy it and I will see you soon.